<laughs> All right, welcome to episode 67 of the Grindhouse Podcast. I'm your host, Edwin Cabrera, aka Steady Eddie. Uh, to the left of my screen, if you can, if you're looking like well, how I'm looking, uh, is Krita, my homeboy. And What's up, uh, guys? underneath me is my guy from San Diego, uh, John Lee, aka JDM John. Yo, from first San of all, Diego. First of all, I ain't from San Diego, son. <laughs> <laughs> I just live out here. Repping Word. little things back to the woods. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> L-Y dub in the city. You know what I'm saying? Still riding around crazy. Down in San Diego with Lil Xan, you know? Lil <laughs> Xan. Yo, shout out to Southeast Diego. Y'all know, <laughs> you know, know the situations. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> what, what other artists are from San Diego? Uh, fucking Nick Cannon apparently is a San Diego rapper. He's your favorite um, rapper. Is that is that why you moved up there? Nah, nah. Um, actually, me and Ed were going through uh, the texts earlier today, and we were talking about San Diego rappers for some reason, or ended up on that that topic. I actually thought it was really interesting because like we always talk about Lynn rappers, right? But like, I don't think San Diego has like that heavy of a hip hop presence that's like well known, you know. Uh, there's that one artist, uh, I think his name's Hardini. Uh, I found him on, get this, on Instagram on fucking Dago TV, which is, the, it's probably a better news source than the actual news, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> like, a lot of fuckery goes down on Dago TV, but right. they also have Tap In Tuesdays. Yeah. Shout out Dago <laughs> TV, getting in the work. Yeah, Shout out Dago TV one time. On the, on the ground level, getting I respect it. it. Um, so yeah, uh, you want to just remind the folks how they can support us? Uh, yes, you can always uh, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. It obviously helps us out. Uh, tell your friends about us. Also, uh, the best way to support us is to buy some merch. Uh, we have a ton of stuff on the store. It's grindhost.store. Super easy to get to. All right, let's get in today's episode. All right, all right, what do we got first? Uh, unfortunately, we have some more sad news. Um, obviously, we haven't done a sidebars in a couple weeks. Um, uh, DMX passed away uh, during that time uh, from an overdose, uh, which he ended up having a heart attack. Um, yeah, man, sucks, sucks to see. And, and, you know, he's someone that, you know, super iconic in hip hop. You know, he definitely ushered in that aggressive raw sound into the the mainstream um you guys have any thoughts yeah um <laughs> you done you want to um well if you if you don't mind uh i'll just jump in just before i forget um but basically uh like dmx's energy is fucking insane um have you guys ever seen him live i have, I have not i've seen it live on video All which right. his right. his like Dude, it's crazy. Like people like mosh and shit. I, I, like, yo. I saw that video of um him crying, like him like, you know, that that's very infamous, but him at the concert fucking packed out and he's like doing a prayer and he's crying and it's like and it's like so emotional. Like I feel like I think I cried like watching the video. So yeah. I know it gets very like it, it's on a different level, DMX, you know. That that that's he's on a different level, but continue. Yeah, so um, I, I don't remember what year it was, possibly 2017. I went to a Nas concert, right? And um, like this was during the time that DMX was up in Nashua, like uh, uh, doing drug rehab. I don't know if you guys recall that, but like there was like pictures of them, of him even like fans saw him at like a wing stop and stuff. So it was like confirmed that he was in Nashua somewhere. Um, but <clears throat> so like Nas is doing his sets. And it was with um, Lauren Hill. And uh, all of a sudden, like, Nas stops the show, right? This is, like, like real hip-hop head shit. Like, I'm talking, like, there was people there with, like, digital cameras. You know what I'm saying? Like, recording this. Not on their phone, but, like, on, like, a real digital camera. But anyway, like, he was like, yo, I'm going to, like, bring out a, a good friend of mine, whatever, whatever. And, like, I, like, wanted it to be DMX, but, like, at the same time, I didn't know if he was, like, at that point where he could perform you know um but i actually had like the real chance of seeing dmx live like and it was crazy dude like 
I had no idea I knew that many words to DMX songs and that I could yell that Rough Riders anthem that loud and like, you know. <laughs> uh, dude, he had all like, the bangers, man. Like, dude, like yeah. it was it was on it was unreal. And uh, you know, like just to celebrate DMX's life. He touched a lot of people and he changed hip hop in a lot of ways. And like, you know, he's we lost a fucking legend, man. Like definitely. Yeah, uh I um I'm not a, um, I, I don't consider myself to be especially religious. I, I consider myself to be more spiritual than religious. But um, one thing I really, really love about DMX, and I think what I cherish more than even just like the music is the prayers that he does. Um, and there's, you know, like five or six that he's, that he does on, on, a, a, you know, his various different albums that he's put out. Um, and it always like even though i'm not like like i said I'm, even though i'm not super religious it always just hits me differently it always makes me um you know it, it touches me in a way that not, not many people can form words and, and and you know put things in the way DM, dmx puts things it's beautiful like even just the things like there's like a meme of him like watering orchids and the way he is able to look at life and 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 make meaning make create symbols from the things that he does like he, he has everything that he does has a deeper meaning you know he's one of those people that just he sees life in, in a way that a lot of people can't um and he's he's, he's wise he's wise and, and and the way he connects with people you know the way he like there's like videos of him just like walking down the street in the hood you know toughest hood wherever and he's just like walking down the street no security no gun on him mad jewelry on him and off strength nobody fucks with him because he is different he's a different type of dude he can connect with people differently he sees life in a different way and honestly i feel like he he's he's god sent you know like i feel like that like he's he was put in this earth for a different calling like you know he was just that special of a person and um you know so i know he's he always struggled you know, with, uh, you know, with drugs, um, you know, his, his mentor from when he was young laced, you know, some weed and I think put some crack in it or something like that. I, I forgot the exact story, but I know that he had been de battling demons for a very long time. Um, and we were all worried that this would happen. Um, but I'm, I'm actually just grateful that he was able to live as long as he had, because, because there have been multiple times where I thought he wouldn't be able to make it. Um, so I, I think being able to reach 50, um, and uh, living the life that he lived and, and leaving an impression on the world that like he did. Um, you know, he, he's one of those people that I look at, uh, like in my apartment, for example, and if you've seen like any videos that I've shot in my apartment, you always in the background, I typically have uh, a painting of uh, uh, Nipsey Hussle and Tupac dressed as kings with crowns on. And uh, they signify the reason I have those two on um, and not like people always ask me like, oh, why don't you have this person on this person on? And I tell them like those dudes are different. It goes beyond the music for those dudes. They were prophets. They were sent here for a deeper purpose. It wasn't just about putting on dope music. It was about what the message behind the music meant and how it connected people and how it uplifted people. And I could say the same thing about, being, about DMX. You know, he was one of those people that, you know, he, he, he was put on this earth for a different purpose and he used hip hop as a medium um, to serve that purpose. And He's, I would say he's he's a hip hop prophet for sure, and he definitely deserves to be, you know, recognized as such. Well said. I, I mean, I have, you know, nothing too, too much more to say about it. Uh, I don't know if John, if you have anything else that you want to add, but. Uh, well, Ed, what's what's your favorite, uh, like, uh, DMX like record? I, I I have one, but I don't even remember the word, like the name of the song. It's slipping. Um, it's definitely slipping. slipping. Yeah, yeah, it's slipping for me because I, I, not, not in the way he battles his demons, but everybody, in my opinion, has demons one way or another, you know. Um, and I, I myself, obviously, like I feel like I have a lot of demons that I'm battling, and and I'm, I'm constantly trying to overcome and maintain, and you know, keep, you know, uh, you know, at bay. And in a song like that, where you're, you're, he's so vulnerable and he's talking about his demons um you know they may him his demons and mine might not be the same but i can connect on on just sharing that type of pain and being that vulnerable to be able to create a song like that and so that's always mm -hmm. been my favorite dmx song and, and of course i listened to that when i heard the news that he passed away and that song is different when you listen to um you know when you listen to it after the fact but um yeah i would say that's my favorite mm -hmm. do, do you remember a song where um 
he was basically talking to like either the equivalent of his um his conscience or could possibly been like you know like a godlike figure or something like that where it was like um he was talking to it and then it would just point out things of like you know like oh like you got to go do this thing and then he's like yo but that's my man's and then he like then his conscience said something else do you remember that song i, I don't know uh, man but yeah yeah, that, that song, I think, like, separated DMX from um, just, like, what we know of him as, you know, like, Rough Riders Anthem or whatever like that, and, like, just, like, the surface of what cultivated, I guess, like, a, a following in a way, but I think his real following is, like, when you actually listen to his other songs, where you're like, okay, like, DMX is more than just, like, a, a party, you know, rapper, he's more of a... Um, there's a much more, like you said, like an intellectual who could actually go into many layers of deep, complex songs that um, I don't think, I'm, you know, most artists have been able to achieve. So, you know, he's a he's definitely a complex guy, and I, you know, I wish I understood more of his discography and followed more. And actually, it's kind of like how I felt with Nipsey Hussle. You know, Nipsey died right when I was kind of coming around to finding him, and then like it's kind of like I feel like I missed out for not like appreciating him while he was still alive you know so that's how i feel about dmx right now word um all right well let's let's move on to to something else but uh, um unfortunately we have more sad news um so black rob uh formerly uh a bad boy records uh uh artist uh passed away at 52. Uh, the rapper uh, recently hospitalized in Atlanta uh, for cause of death was cardiac arrest. Um, another loss in hip hop. Um, I, I feel like, yeah, we just keep getting hit with them. Um, but he was a couple years older than, than DMX, so. Um, I, I would say, you know, rest in peace, obviously, both DMX and Black Rob. Um, I know uh, 50 is, is a young age to pass away, but at the same time, like 50 is, you know, a good a good chunk of time on earth. And so, you know, I, I know there's very, very little positive in this whole equation, you know, when, when somebody passes. But I think that there is a positive in both DMX and Black Rob's case. In DMX's case, you know, he'd always been battling his demons and depression has always been something he's always been battling. You know, so him, you know, being called away, I don't think is, is to him is the worst thing in the world. Um, you know, in, in Black Rob's case, I mean, I, th I think it's a sadder story because um, I think he, he he never had, I think, the successes that DMX has had, you know, and so I think he had a little bit of a different fight for his life and career, um, you know, because he had Woe and I, that was a, a, a big record, but I, I correct me if I'm wrong, but I think he had been struggling financially. Um, and so, you know, I, I, you know, he didn't have the, he did, he wasn't given, I think the flowers that, uh, DMX was given. And so I just want to recognize him and shout him out too, because he absolutely, you know, deserves for his contribution to hip hop. I mean, what was a banger? What was crazy? And he was a, a, a crazy rapper, crazy style. I wish that his career would have lasted longer than it did. Cause I really feel like for his era, man, black Rob, he was that dude. He, I, I like, he kind of, he killed it. You know, um, he just had the flow. He had the the, the style, the the voice. Um, you know, but but music, the music industry is crazy, and, and you always you always hear these stories, and and um, there, there's it's not always a happy ending, and not to say that Black Rob's ending is 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 a sad one, but I wish it was just like he was appreciated more, um, and looked out more than um than I think that he was. Yeah, <clears throat> I think Black Rob is a um one of those artists that uh, I think a lot of people know of that song like whoa but they don't really know anything about Black Rob and I can't really sit here and say I knew much more about him other than that that single up until recently of course like when like I started hearing about um, you know him like kind of like being potentially homeless and dealing with all the stuff that he's been dealing with and it is sad because like I, I thought that hip-hop would be more I feel like um, I guess like it's a network and it'll support, you know, like I wish somebody knew something about what was going on with him and kind of like lended that handout, but I really don't know what caused him 
to, um, you know, to really pass, whether it be like natural health or whatever, you know. I would say this, and because I've also heard the stories about him being potentially homeless. I will say this. Nobody knows the relationships that he had and how they transpired. I, it could be that, you know, the music industry is that shysty of an industry that not one person, including like P. Diddy, like didn't reach out at all when they heard that, you know, Black Rob was struggling. Or it could be on some different level. Maybe Black Rob was was too proud, you know, even tell the grave to, to even take a hand up from somebody because he didn't feel like that was who he was to do it. Mm-hmm. You never know what these people's relationships were like and why things happen the way they do. So I wouldn't, I, you know, regardless of what I said, and I, I, I still feel like Black Rob in his career and in his life probably wasn't recognized as well as I wish he was. But I also mm-hmm. don't blame, I also can't blame certain people unless I know facts, unless people come out and say, this is what happened, blah, blah, blah. And then and there's a little bit more of a substance there. I can't just speculate on who could have done what because you never know people's relationships, man. You know? No, absolutely. I mean, I'm not saying that um, I know the situation. I think that um, if it ended up being that, like, he was just forgotten. You know, I guess the the root of where my side of the discussion comes from is more of, like, we only know him from, you know, one single. You know what I mean? So, like, that easily, like, we as people who aren't, you know, like, that close to him and stuff could forget about him. Um, I wonder what what was going on in the background to your point right of like why did it land that way you know and we don't know um i mean time has already passed and he's already gone so it's like you know we could only respect the dad and you know wish him that you know he isn't in pain and all that stuff but um that song is still legendary in my book i probably listen to it at least once a week while driving (laughs) um so you know commemoratory like you know, now that he's gone, probably had to play that a little bit just to, you know, show respects. So I don't know if it's the product of the internet era that we maybe see more artists than we used to see back in the day, because maybe back in the day we typically learned about artists through the radio. But I just feel like we have to deal more now with de- like hip hop deaths than we ever used to back then. Like I feel like back yeah. when I heard about a rapper <laughs> or somebody in hip hop dying, it hit more because you you didn't hear it every day you didn't hear it every week you didn't hear it every month you heard it like every other month if that you know like so when when a rapper died especially a legendary one it was like oh fuck like you know that's crazy like jam master day like you know you you would hear these things and they stick out more now man it's like it, you you know you turn your head and it's like you hear about somebody else passing away whether they be young or old like it, it just it, it, there's like I don't know, man. It's it's tough. I, I yeah. I mean, like I don't know if it's like like connected to like sort of like a lifestyle, uh, you know, that hip hop brings. Um, because I mean, like Black Rob, he had a lot of health issues leading up to this. So like he had he was like diabetic. He had like kidney failure. Um, yeah. So I I don't know. It just it sucks. But also like you know if you sort of like always in the studio or like touring like dude you you ain't eating right it's like you're not sleeping right um so yeah i think it's just like a, a big part of it's lifestyle and you know you you also have like artists that you know that are abusing drugs and you know have mental health problems um so yeah i just think that that lifestyle really amplifies uh that stuff i think you're I think uh, you're on there to add to that, I think hip hop is just getting old, man. Not like old as in I'm getting tired of it. It's, it's old in terms of like, dude, it's 2021. These most, these dudes are like, you know, older. You know, it's hard to upkeep that lifestyle. And we might just be exactly. witnessing what, what happens. Yeah, yeah, like that shit catching up or something. I agree. Exactly. It's, like, it's almost like, you know, you hit a certain age, you know, in your 20s and then everybody starts getting married and all of a sudden you're like every other weekend you're at a wedding. You know, I guess, I guess I guess with time, like you start seeing these things pop up more and more. And I guess because hip hop is almost a certain age, like hip hop is young, you know, in the grand scheme of mm-hmm. things that like maybe we're hitting that phase in hip hop where we start seeing mm-hmm. more just like in life, like you hit a certain age where you start seeing different things more. So um, I don't know. It just it definitely is, is another like I remember I had a, a conversation about XXX dying with my net with my nephew. 
and it was like it was dark man because he's like it, he had by that point been so desensitized to rappers dying that you know he like he was just kind of like not that he was joking but he was kind of just like prophesizing who's next and it, it was kind of dark and i was like hey, you can't do that like you can't like you can't mm -hmm. like you can't just speculate on somebody dying it's just not good and like he didn't understand what i was getting at obviously because he's young but you know it, it's definitely something that i think everybody every generation who listens to hip-hop who has some connection uh is experiencing because like i said it's hitting people it's hitting rappers young and old you know and mm -hmm. uh, different reasons but it's it's sad all the same you know yeah, definitely all right let's uh move on to uh next topic uh so edwin brought this up um noticed a lot of artists like big artists not wanting to drop records due to like the pandemic and unable to tour um but what what you're seeing is a lot of upcoming uh artists drop records um what, what what's everybody's thoughts on this yeah, yeah and just to clarify <laughs> what i was thinking you know for the segment is is like you said, like there is a drought for the for the stars right now because you, people aren't touring yet. They haven't been touring all of 2020. Um, they're not releasing any serious music. They're not dropping any serious albums because they can't tour and that's where they make most of their money. And so all these big artists, if you've noticed, if people are keeping count, there hasn't been that many releases considering, you know, and um, it's very, it, it's much more spaced out um when a big artist drops it typically like that's kind of like the drop of the week or whatever but there hasn't been too much in in, in terms of uh, big releases i think this is a perfect opportunity for the young up and coming cats to start flooding the market with something new that people aren't looking for but people right now are it's like when you can't get weed you know and you have to hit up that third dealer and by that point you'll fucking if you got a mid shit, i'll get the mid i don't give a fuck i just want to <laughs> Point. you know what i'm saying that, that, that's not to say that a new artist is mid exactly. to grade no, weed <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not to say that a new artist is mid all i'm saying is the market where people typically are gravitated towards big artists if you if there's a drought they're looking for new music so it's like this is the perfect time especially when you got that fire to start flooding the fucking market you know what i'm saying and so um you know, I think we're seeing that we saw that 2020 with a lot of Lynn artists. And that's why, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of, of Lynn specifically, because I feel like there's a lot of releases. They I, I think a lot of people capitalize on that. I the big uh, example is Van Buren. They same thing. 2020 Van Buren was releasing records like crazy. 2021, they're back at it. We're going to talk about it later, but they just released their album. They're flooding the market. They're taking advantage of the opportunity and taking advantage of that spotlight and they're making the most of it. This is the perfect, there's not, I don't think, I believe that there's not going to be a better time to do it like that, like get on the, get on just by sheer force. I don't think there's going to be a better time than now to be able to do that because people are looking for new music and, and nobody that's big and wants to like cash in on an album is going to put anything out until they can tour. Got to take advantage. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm saying. So, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like open waters right now for, for artists. So, um, you know, and I, I feel like, you know, obviously later on, we're going to talk about album reviews. I mean, all, the reviews that we have are all local acts. Well, not like local acts, but acts that we know uh, in Lynn in the Boston, Massachusetts area. Um, so and they're all fire records. So it's like there's the proof right there. Yeah, but I mean, I think like um, the new uh, artists, is always going to have trouble breaking into the scene, right? Because there's going to be the old guard to stop kind of like getting spins on the radio and stuff like that without having like a major energy. Because if that was to be the case, like, um, you know, we'd be on Dat Piff right now or whatever, like, you know, like mixtape era, just downloading crazy. Like there's music all day. Um, so there's two things I'm thinking about. Dat Piff right now, nigga. Like nobody's checking it. <laughs> Hey, right? Is that site still available? You know, it's it is. <laughs> I I have the app. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't even know right. that app, I'm did about you? Playlist now, son. Uh, yeah. I didn't even know uh, they had a, uh, an app. 
No, but like that's all web based. John's John's still here. Two thousand six, still. I'm still on hip hop heads forums and all that stuff. No, it's like I I think the new artist is uh, this is an opportunity, like you guys said, blah blah blah, like you know, drop now, like while everything's kind of quiet and shit. But I think this is wild corny of the the bigger artists to not release music when you got it because like, yo, like, what is really the sound of COVID? I don't right. know. <laughs> is, is that it? Uh, I was gonna say just like silence, right. isolation. <laughs> right. so, so let me phrase that question right. Okay. Like, during, during, like during COVID, right? This is the exact time where we are absorbing music and media. We're just at home, like beating off mad times. Like they, <laughs> they ain't shit to do right now other than just be at home, probably listening to music. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's kind of like you ever listen to, um, not not you guys ever listen to, but like you call, you guys remember like when like Lil Wayne was going through all his litigation bullshit with like Birdman that they yeah. finally released Carter Five, and that fucking album was clearly two years ago when it was made. Yeah. I feel like all these artists are gonna release music like two years from now, and that shit's gonna sound like pre-COVID times. I'm like, bro, like that shit not gonna hit. Like it may, you may be very correct on that, but I will say this: I always believe that good music is it's timeless. So if you got yeah. that, so I if you you write, I think a lot of music will not survive because it's gonna be dated. But with the artists who make music that's timeless, who cares? I think I think I think artists, some artists, some great artists, are able to do that. Some artists are timing it cor- incorrectly. They should just be releasing it now. You yeah. know, like uh, I guess we'll see. But I, I think that m- good music is timeless, and, and good artists don't have to worry. The artists who are just like they're, they're being a little stingy right now, they're gonna pay the price because they're gonna release a trash record. It's gonna be old and outdated. I actually like that little Wayne, uh, the, the Carter Five, but like it, you're right, it was dated. But there was some joints on there. It was crazy. Like yeah. there was joints on there. But I no, wish those... it was just released two years earlier. Exactly. It, like imagine the type of energy that that album would have had if it was two years before, right? So it's like you know, I don't, I can't think off the top of my head right now what kind of artist maybe the Kendricks of the world and stuff like that can release whenever the hell they want because they kind of create you know, the tone for the year. But even then, it's like the Pimp of Butterfly, that album, right? Like if it didn't come out at that exact time and it came out like two years later, in a way, even though it was like a problem series that like occurs throughout history, right? Like, you know, the oppression and all that stuff that was going on that he talked about in there. That's that's a common theme, but I think like that timing was so perfect because it was like, there was like almost like civil unrest occur, like kind of boiling up. You know, and then like Kendrick released that album and it was like, boom, you know, like everybody like kind of latched onto it and it made sense. So, you know, if you're if you're a rapper and you out there looking to drop a drop an album that sounded hot in 2019, um, you know, hit up Grindhouse. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Damn, Edwin's not even gonna do an intro right here. Word. Grind house. <laughs> a big bust in cities and towns around Boston. Drugs and weapons seized. More than two to me, people one mic's one love is a couple different things. First and foremost, it's a true story. You know, it's a biography about the life of. Niggas don't know how I do this for right. I think I just be out here rapping and shit. Like, oh, this nigga Vice never rapping now. It's a movie. It's a movie. This is not a oh, music video where I'm just rapping my lyrics. When a song grabs you, it just makes you want to listen. I'm special, man. I'm telling you. I'm just trying to keep that real rap shit alive. It's a, a different perspective packaged and delivered with a clear homage to Nas's One Love. It's like a little time machine. It brings me back to that boom bap era, that storytelling. I feel like I really wanted to. Um, kind of harness that 90s vibe right there and then deliver that. That's all you need to know. So I wanted to share that real quick. That's actually a, uh, a documentary that's being released soon by my homeboy, friend of the pod, friend of Grindhouse, uh, One Mike. Um, 
he is editing and uh, creating this documentary on the rapper Blacksmith from Lynn um, about his life. Um, uh, Mikey actually made the song One Love uh, in homage, obviously, to, to Nas's One Love. And um, he made it about Blacksmith. And so he's actually went off and created and I've kind of been like helping him sort of like with whatever questions he's had about editing, but he's gone off and just like dedicated just the last few months to like, you know, creating this story. And so uh, I play that trailer just to show you guys, um, you know, that there's some beautiful, beautiful stories coming out of Lynn. Um, keep, keep out uh, that. I think that uh, documentary is going to be released soon. I'll give you a date when I have one, but uh, I figured I'd play that trailer. Um, and I also, uh, you know, I also wanted to play it because today is April 19th, which is the anniversary of Illmatic. And so, um, you know, got to shout out Nas for making one of the greatest rap albums of all time. Um, and, you know, uh, perfect time, obviously, to, to drop that trailer, kind of paying homage to Nas. Nas. So, um, yeah, wanted to play that real quick. Yeah, that was dope, man. Uh, one Mike, uh, you know, incredible editor. I know that he he's just starting out, but man, he can he can definitely edit. So. Um, show it to him dude i love that song i actually like still watch the video and listen to that shit often that that's just such a good song so when's it coming out again Ed? i'll keep you posted uh it should be out soon uh i think mikey's just putting the finishing touches on there but uh once we have a date i will keep you guys posted uh but share that trailer um i'll share it again uh, on the Grand House uh, page, but um, definitely keep an eye out. And shout out Blacksmith also, man. Um, you know, he was obviously big, uh, you know, a, a few years back, going back like 10 years or so, um, you know, and then, um, you know, did his thing. You'll find out more about his story on, on the, docu in the documentary. Um, but, you know, he's come back. He actually played, and you saw a little snippet there. Uh, he played at our show last year. He played at the Grand House show last year, and he killed it. Man, yeah. he brought a, a crazy energy and an authenticity to that show that uh everybody appreciated, man. He was definitely one of the people that stole that show. So shout out Blacksmith, shout out One Mike, and uh, like I said, y'all, uh, keep out. That documentary is coming soon. We'll let you know when. Word. Uh, uh, John, I know you had a uh, you had a uh, story about Nas's Illmatic. You wanna you wanna tell that story? <laughs> All right, I'll keep it quick. So. Um, <laughs> All right, so y'all ever had a moment and where you thought that you was gonna die, like this was it? Yeah, I actually, yeah. All right. <laughs> all right, so, sorry, so I was like 26 years old, getting my wisdom teeth taken out. I had never been knocked out before at a dentist, you know what I'm saying? Because they were like, you want to be awake for this or not, right? I was like, nah, just, just you know, knock me out, fuck me up, right? So of course, like the t days leading up to it, I was on fucking Reddit reading about shit. And I was like, damn, son, I could die from this shit. Like, what if I don't come back, you know? So I, I still remember I walked into the clinic. They, they you know, they, they had me lay down and shit. And it was like a younger dentist and his crew all setting up. And he was like, uh, you know, what kind of music you listen to? Like, we'll put on something for you just so you could relax or whatever. And I had thought about this a lot. Like, what are the last things I would listen to before I die like the last album like last foods or whatever I was like could y'all put on Nas Illmatic for me <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I, I was at the dentist right mad people were just like this dude does not look like he would request Nas Illmatic right now and like they put the gas mask on me and have you lay back and I still like to this day like vividly hear like that train track from the beginning and it was like the the, the beats are like the genesis and like them talking about it and I was like thinking back I was like did I do everything I wanted in life like was did, did, did everything occur that I am happy with am I ready to go and I was glad to say that I would die listening to Nazomatic and be happy <laughs> damn i love that record personally because it has this uh, one of my favorite like sounds in hip-hop and and there's also one of my favorite things about hip-hop is that there's all yeah rap is rap and hip-hop is, is beautiful in many different ways but what i love about it is that there's different sounds that you really get from it what i love about illmatic is it has this like authentic nostalgic sound like nostalgia as a sound is packaged really well and um and illmatic and it's like i know john is one of your favorite records is one of my favorite records also we've listened to that record countless times together driving around chilling 
Um, and uh, that record, I think, you're, if I was to pass away, listening to any record is absolutely Illmatic for sure. I'm, I'm down with that. That yeah. I'm with you on that. You know, maybe maybe we'll be dying together listening to that shit. Like, <laughs> <so much. laughs> goddamn, clip wasn't yeah. Illmatic, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I yeah. I hope not. <laughs> goddamn, us, us dying to Illmatic is fucking crazy. Like, it's a real dark be- episode. <laughs> <laughs> look at each other, right? We're like on the on the, <laughs> the cops and shit like that. Like there's like mad cop cars chasing us. We just look at each other, right? And John's Integra, <laughs> <laughs> and we just start fucking like you know fucking uh uh uh. Give me like like uh, what's a good song that would like uh, not halftime? New York State of Mind, maybe some right, yeah. yeah comes on where you just like all right, fuck this shit, let's go for it crank uh-huh. that shit, yeah. hit the motherfucking gas, and just go right over a cliff. Like, <laughs> I'd rather die than you motherfucking catch me. You know? Word. That's how we go out. That would be a glorious way to go out. Too much GTA. Too much GTA. <laughs> <Yeah. going on. laughs> like, 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 that shit played out like a Grand Theft Auto, like, Steve, because whenever everyone drives, we always end up in the cop chase, no matter what was happening. For, for... For the audience, we we us three play together uh, a lot, so um, you know we're always fucking shit up in that game. So oh, love that Yo, game. Like speaking of Reddit, right? Did you know that they used to have like a, a weekly meeting, like basically a thread where they talked about songs on Illmatic that you would have to remove, like they would vote songs off the album. Why? Yeah, why they're, would you? They're, they're that big of like Illmatic stands, like they can't. Like, like they can't come to a consensus that the album is good. They have to argue about what's which songs have to be like Taken the off. best song. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. That's why. It's a weird way to like like an album. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. That's why. I'm not yeah, anyway, rep- I don't like that. Re- represents how I would go out. So <laughs> there you have it, guys. New York State of Mind as my go out record, man. I definitely like that. Either in the hail of bullets. Going to the fucking clip with you, you know, I, whatever. I, I, you know, Illmatic, however you get it, is a good album to die to. Mm. Nah, we we got to go out in a shootout, busting back, <laughs> like like hand out the window, like <laughs> back to GTA. I mean, it's you know, literally what we do. Just stop. Just stop. It's, it's it's melting our brains, bro. Yeah, the, the those Word. violent video games are fucking destroying us. Light out son everybody going out and fire anyway <laughs> next top <laughs> all right <laughs> all right let's uh let's make our way over to album reviews uh we have uh all albums from the massachusetts area so uh let's start with kmf trey uh room records yeah. uh so we hung out with trey not too long ago and he said that you know he, he was releasing uh basically songs he he recorded in his bedroom um and yeah it's a it's a really good record and i think there's honestly there's a ton of radio hits on that record um i feel like kmf that's their blueprint is is to make dope uh radio hits so yeah i definitely i got that same vibe i got i got i got if i was to make any comparison i would say somewhere in the realm of like travis Travis Scott ish, you know, like where it's like this melodic kind of like um, spacey kind of sound with some like banging like trap beats. My favorite song, I can't remember the exact name. I think it's like Go Ahead Baby um, or something like that. Uh, but that song is dope. That's my favorite song on, on the album. Um, and uh, I think in terms of like the growth of, of KMF Trey, I think this album is definitely showing some sort of a growth in his, in terms of his artistry. And I, I, I got the chance to sit down with him and talk to him about his music um, for the documentary series I'm working on um, for Grindhouse. And just sitting down and talking with him, man, like he's a smart dude. He's a, he's a very ambitious, uh, driven individual, like a lot of members of KMF are. Um, he knows what he wants. It seemed like he's always known um, what he wanted it's, and it's always been in music. Um, and I absolutely, in this record especially, like I see a lot of growth, and I definitely see a direction. Um, I I absolutely can hear this playing on the radio. Um, I hope that people receive it well, because um, yeah, this was this was the shit, man. Shout out to KMF Trey. 
yeah, I'm I'm a bad podcast member. <laughs> um, but I'll I'll just give love to KMS because it seems like everything I've listened so far from that camp has been awesome. Um, one one piece of like you know insight I could give is that I'm actually at real time trying to look up KMF Trey's album right now and it doesn't come up on Spotify. Yeah, Where it's on SoundCloud it? and um, SoundCloud? Audio Mac. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned. Uh, it. It's not it's not it's not on all DSPs, but I I, I hope that changes soon because uh, I I'm definitely like a Spotify guy, so I was also like same. <laughs> Where's it on Spotify? I can't find it. You know, and I had to like yeah. uh, Google it. Uh, but I'm I'm sure I'm sure it'll be on Spotify soon enough. But um. Yeah, shout out to the KMF squad. Yeah, oh, yeah, guys, guys, just keep putting stuff out. So definitely uh, check out all their music. Um, all right, so let's jump over to uh, now you see Low, uh, Low's Gospel. Um, honestly, dude, great follow up to his last record. Um, super spacey vibes still. Uh, Reasons produced it. Um, great he features. He rapped on it. He raps on it, and. It, fucking crazy i had to like pause it and like i'm like wait did i see reasons like on featured i'm like i didn't even know yo when i, I didn't was, know he could rap i like i just always knew him as a producer so that that was fucking dope man he can he can rap his ass off right when he came on i was like i i was like um you know because I'm, when i'm listening to music and this is how i judge like if a song or if somebody's rapping crazy or if a song is really good if i'm doing two things at once listening to music you know, doing something else, and I stop him. Like, yo, who's that? That's that's how I know somebody's good. And yeah. reasons, like I, you know, I'd never heard reasons why, but I didn't, I, you know, like I, whatever. But when I was like listening to the album, I had to stop and be like, yo, who's that? I don't. That doesn't sound like low. And when I go check, it says reasons. You know, uh, performed by reasons in the in the credits. I was like, yo, okay. So you make crazy beats and you can rap. That's crazy. I'm I'm looking. Yeah. I'm looking forward to more reasons also. But this album, um, Now You See Low, shout out Now You See Low. This album was crazy. My favorite, though, I would have to say, the beats are crazy, the production is crazy. I have to say, though, my favorite song is ironically the song that's the most like stripped down, which is Recurring Dreams. That's my favorite song. I like mm-hmm. that a lot. I, I like the um, the one with Sunita. I, I think it's Smoke Something. Um, Smoke Some, I think. Um, yeah. yeah, that song's great. Um, yeah, man. Do- dope record, man. They uh, group mm. gods like they they kill it man i i love their production love their rapping where's where this guy from lynn son lynn, lynn? Oh, oh damn just trying to make sure y'all shout out the right place you heard all right okay good, good not san diego <laughs> not san diego <laughs> i fuck with the album cover though it should look like it'd be a good joint so um i'll check it out words all right, let's uh let's jump over to uh Van Buren, Bad for Press. Um I feel like they've been like sort of saying that they were gonna do a, a collab record for a while. They've been kind of teasing that, you know, just being on our podcast and things like that. Um yeah, man, they fucking delivered. Um I love that song Brain Dead, I love that song Medic. Um Van Buren can like do no wrong in my eyes. Like whatever they do, I'm like for. I'm like, yep, it's gonna be dope. Damn, son, you so, it like that. Is is Van yeah. Buren like a crew? Is that right? It's like a label crew sort of thing, but I they're would, from Brockton. Yeah, they're from Brockton. I would say I'm just fucking with you, Krita. I would say that um, uh, in terms of my favorite song, girls just want to have fun. That song, I love that song. That song's crazy. Um, that's my favorite. Uh, I really just to shout out the little skit that they did the the promo. The, the and I knew the album was coming because of that skit, the the Bad for Press skit. Yeah, um, that was funny. And I was like, I love, I love when Van Buren does stuff like that because it always just like it's it's just always like funny that it, because they're so familial. They they have such chemistry together because they're like a family. You see that t- chemistry just play out naturally. definitely. Um, it happened. Same thing. Like one of my favorite skits for like, prom- uh, uh, you know, promoting uh, an event was last year uh, before the pandemic. Luke Bars had yeah, this the great show. Scott. Right. And he had that skit of like coming to the great with like, I think St. Leo was in there and the, like, and they're just like looking at the camera, treating it as if it was like a, a person. And like, you know, so that I, they always like they're funny. They're the chemistry is crazy and they make great music, bro. Like I, I fuck with Van Buren. 
um girls just want to have fun crazy record but the whole album is is, is fire I, I that has been my um uh, i have to say I, that has been the one that's been on my rotation the most this past week just like um uh, I think, what is it like 14 records i believe something like i think that. so yeah it, it's a good amount um but yeah man i think they're gonna have like one hell of a year 13 um, 13 13 like, I feel like individually they're going to be dropping records. So I just feel like they're going to have a busy year. Um, but and I can't can't wait to see what they're going to do. And so. like I said, like I said earlier, they were one of the, the, the you know, uh, squads out of mass last year during the pandemic that took full advantage of the fact that no artists were really dropping music. They were taking advantage of the fact that the door was a drought. They're doing that this year. They're doubling down 2021. So uh, you, you Van Buren is making a run. They're making a run for it. So that's the point. Yeah. Uh, um, I know I'm only commenting on album covers right now, but honestly, <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, can we do this for the podcast where like when the world's back to normal, we had a house party. I need us to have a cover photo just like this, where there's like 58 dudes, like just like Close sweaty. <laughs> 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 like that, like that, that whole picture that right there. Fun, the whole... You put it that way, that does not sound fun. <laughs> yeah, Bro, yeah, I don't think that, that, we should that, do that. that yeah, that whole picture sound like a like that just looks like a vibe. Like you know, like the energy was crazy yeah, that, in that room. It, and that because what I was saying, yeah, they're like a family. They're like a family. Yeah. That chemistry, you see it there. You see it in that photo. Yo, those those fifty eight dudes that you want to take a photo with, they gotta be like. <laughs> we don't have enough friends, man. I, I, I don't think. <laughs> For me, want to take a picture with 50 dudes. <laughs> like, I want Chris in the corner holding the money up to his ear. And Ed's, like, Ed's rolling a blunt or something in the corner, not even paying attention to the photo. <laughs> He's too cool for that. You know, shout out, shout out to Twin. As a matter of fact, shout out to Twin. I've noticed, like, um, because, because, uh, uh, I always I've been seeing a lot of photography from like uh, War Motion View and and a few other photographers that like when they when I see Twin taking a group photo with like Wes Khalil or whatever somehow it is always he always has Chinese food and <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah I def I def saw that he always has Chinese it's so food good it's, it's mad funny yeah I mess with yeah it. I mess that's with dope <laughs> but yeah I. I think that's it for topics. So if there's anything else you guys want to add, go for it. I would say just to plug what we're doing, Krita, um, be on the lookout for the Lynn Hip Hop Wall of Fame website is going to come out very soon. I, I Krita, you know, let me preview it. Uh, it is yeah. mighty, mighty, mighty dope. Uh, it's going to have all sorts of information on how you can get involved with the project. Um, whether it be, uh, you know, becoming one of the board members and helping us kind of like you know, uh, move the direction of this project, um, you know, and create a foundation for this pro project to exist year to year, as opposed to just a one-time thing. Um, or maybe if you have just a deep appreciation for, for Lynn Hip Hop and just want to be sort of a curator of the culture and, and, and vote uh, to nominate artists to get inducted, uh, you know, hit us up in terms of uh, nom uh, subcommittee nominations or subcommittee membership. Um, and that information will all be on the website. So once that's out, uh, we'll let you know um, very soon. I think the website, when's it going when, when we, uh, do, should we talk about that later? But the website's pretty much done, right? We just, yeah, have we're just waiting more, on a few a things from more, people. Just, so we're just finishing it. You know, it's, 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 yeah. it's almost done. We're like, we're very close. We got the, the toothpick. We're like poking, you know, the cake and making it, make sure it's at, at the right, you know, perfect, uh, bake. perfect temp, yeah, perfect temp. <laughs> internal temp. <laughs> <laughs> We're almost there, but I uh, just wanted to let you guys yeah. know because I know I it, it, this is great. I love when I see people talking about it. I've been seeing people talk about it on social media. Um, you know, Jay Moon, shout out to Jay Moon. He's actually joining our board of directors, but he started uh, a great conversation um, over Facebook about it. And um, that's exactly why the project was created so that um, it's not just like, you know, us promoting one or two people in the culture, but it's, it's literally us uplifting the whole culture, helping uplift the whole culture um that way you know people in our community are supporters supporting the artists in our community so like i said more information soon to come we're working diligently to um you know make this thing happen um and you know thank you all for supporting it um and uh you know for the podcast you know if you guys fuck with what we do 
and you guys appreciate it, make sure you're subscribing to us, you're, you're sharing it, you're liking, and you're commenting. So uh, we appreciate you guys. Appreciate you guys. Uh, take care. Have a wonderful uh, day, week, etc. Peace. Yeah.